There have been many stories from all over the world about gnomes, goblins, and trolls. But what if these creatures are not a myth or folklore? What if they were real? Numerous people have claimed to have seen them over the years. One of the most disturbing stories involving a gnome happened in 1999 in the town of Porterville, California, to a woman named Tammy Thomas. Tammy moved there with her three children and onto a 100-acre farm that had a small farmhouse right on the Thule River. But soon after moving there, Tammy started feeling like something was watching her and had an uneasy feeling every time she walked by the old barn, which was located near an isolated corner of the property. She also noticed most of the animals on the farm seemed to avoid the old building. She also observed that none of the neighbor's animals, strays, or wildlife would go near the old barn. Whenever any animals passed the barn, they would walk outwardly and swing wide, and on many occasions, they would act strangely when they got near it, often staring at it as if something were there staring back. The dogs would sometimes go crazy around the barn, barking and yipping, even though no one was there. Sometimes strange noises came from inside the barn, which sounded like grunts, growls, and squeals. Soon, she noticed that a number of her ducks and chickens had disappeared, but couldn't figure out what happened to them. Tammy thought it was just her nerves. Maybe rats or wildlife were inside the barn, and though the missing animals might have just run off or perhaps were killed by coyotes. But soon, a frightening encounter would convince her that it was something more sinister. One evening, Tammy had just returned from town with her son and parked the car. As she exited the vehicle and went to get the groceries out of the trunk, she said she saw movement out of the corner of her eye. When she looked up, there was nothing there. She went back to getting the groceries. But almost immediately, there was another movement. This time, she also heard an insidious laugh. She would later say, this time I heard a very freaky, very evil sounding chuckle. I looked in the direction of the sound and there standing about 50 yards from my son and I was what I can only describe as a gnome. It was a creature about three feet tall, which had a beard and was wearing baggy black pants, a gold colored shirt and a red pointy cap. For a moment, it just stood there, staring at her and her son with deep dead black eyes as if studying them. Then things took a frightening turn. Tammy would later say that thing grinned at her with a creepy grin spread from ear to ear. Its teeth were a gross brown and they were pointed. The thing had a bulbous nose and large deep set eyes. Though she really couldn't tell the color of them, she never got a closer look at them. She didn't know if it was wearing shoes or not. At that moment, she dropped her groceries, grabbed her son, and ran for the house. She slammed and locked the door behind her. She began hysterically telling her daughters what happened. Somewhere outside, the little man was still cackling. There was movement by the window. The terrified family looked out to see what it was. As they approached the window, they could see the top of the red pointed cap come into view, which was extremely frightening because the window was located eight feet over the ground. Tammy quickly closed the blinds, moved her children away from the window, and waited in fright until the thing finally went away. This was the only direct sighting of the evil gnome, but Tammy would occasionally hear that same chuckling laugh coming from inside the barn. She would later say, After that night, whenever the dogs barked or howled, we were pretty sure we knew what they were barking at. We were also pretty sure of where our missing poultry had gone. From time to time, they would hear weird, creepy chuckles and other noises coming from the old barn. Tammy and her family eventually decided to move away. In March of 2010, a family moved into the same house on the Thule River. According to Charlie, the wife, 
It was perfect for their family needs. Her husband took a liking to a pond on the property and decorated it with ceramic fairies, gnomes, and toadstools as yard ornaments. He stocked it with Japanese koi fish. Not surprisingly, Charlie and her family also had a strange and uncomfortable feeling about the old barn on the property. They tried to stay away from it as much as possible. One night at around 3 a.m., Charlie and her husband were woken by what can only be described as a raspy, gurgling singing. Charlie and her husband looked out their bedroom window, and what they saw defied reality. Standing by the pond and holding one of the garden gnomes was a creature that came out of a Grimm's fairy tale. As Charlie would later describe it, the creature was two or three feet tall, wearing maroon pants, a baggy yellow shirt with a brown vest over it, and a dark waistcoat. It had a large gray beard and was wearing a reddish-brown pointed hat. Charlie later said the most horrible part of the creature were its eyes and teeth. When it grinned, its teeth appeared to be jagged and pointed. The eyes were small and beady and had a dark, mean look to them. Charlie and her husband believed the creature saw the couple looking at him. He then reached into the pond and grabbed a koi and ate it furiously. Charlie's husband pushed open the window and yelled at the creature to leave the yard or he would call the police. The creature laughed and then disappeared. The police were called, being notified that an intruder was on the property, but when they got there an hour later, the only evidence found were small footprints about the size of a child's around the pond. This was not the only time the gnome would visit the pond. Night after night, it would be seen holding a yard ornament and eating a fish. The family eventually moved the ornaments and put the fish into a tank inside the house, but this only angered the creature. When it appeared at the usual time of 3 a.m. and saw that the yard ornaments and fish had been removed, it went into a crazed frenzy, beginning to scream in a language that could not be understood. It then began to run around the outside of the house, screaming, howling. Despite this, the family felt safe until Charlie realized the dog door in the kitchen was unlocked. She feared the creature would try to enter the house through it. She was able to lock it and then ran upstairs to close the rest of the windows. The last they heard of the creature was a very loud screeching sound that was coming from below one of the living room windows. Charlie's husband went to investigate and saw the top of the creature's hat underneath the window. The family decided to get out of the house and leave the farm for good. Was this the same creature that Tammy saw a few years before? Or is there a larger and more sinister plan at work? <laughs>